Hello and welcome to the April edition of the Mad Axeman podcast. This week we've got six of the seven usual set of fools returning after a bit of a break and uh, we're, as usual, um, chatting about all sorts of stuff. There's painting, there's buying, there's shopping, there's going to trade shows, there's talking about competitions, there's some tourism in France, there's some very, very dodgy accents. We're discussing the return of the wooden horse. There are cataphract camels. There's the answer to the joke. What happened when Don Juan, Admiral Nelson and Octavia walked into a bar? And lots and lots of other things, including possibly the world's longest ever 3D continuous print. So sit back and enjoy the eclectic April podcast. This means war. Well, it's it's April, isn't it? Um, we've missed we've missed April Fool's Day, so um, most of our regular content <laughs> will actually have to be real um, rather than made up. So that's going to be a problem for all of us, I suspect. But here we are again at the very beginning of April, barely a month after the last one. We're just rolling these damn things out at a ridiculous rate of knots, and, and I think we've got some news about extra ones coming up soon in the very very near future as well. So there's going to be a a cavalcade of podcast nonsense heading your way but we've got a a nearly full um a kind of badger free set of six here for um this month week fortnight day i can't remember which um well this episode of the mad axman podcast and um without further ado i think it's best to just start with since we were around here at sort of the beginning of march what kind of things have you been painting? And I'm going to go and ask Simon because you are you are dominating my screen at the moment. You're the man in the big frame. Um, oh, hey. So yeah, that's that's it. It's all good. So I've been busy painting. Uh, no great surprise to anybody. More Renaissance because it's uh-huh. not like I don't, have, don't have enough of those. Um, so I've been slowly working my way through the uh, Curacao later Louis the Fourteenth French um, and that era of mount of um hmm. troops so painted up a whole bunch of uh, musketeers and sort of later cuirassiers so they, you can, they some of them have like a chest plate they've got a rifle got a pistol um, and you know one or two in each hand just to really give it that whole gangster effect is, is there that much is there a lot of variety in those kurasan figures um, yeah compared to say like um, um using museum miniatures as example where you get one model um the curacao ones tend to come with about three models three mm. to four models per okay group so yeah you, yep. you, um, you sort of shuffle them around you can get a bit uh, a bit of flavor so like you know one guy's holding a pistol off in his hand one sort of pointing it one's off the side and all that so it gives you that mad rabble um effect of a whole bunch of nobility off for a jaunt and just mm. you know go shoot some peasants type of thing so yeah um, they look quite good and, and have you managed to Resist the temptation just to just sod it. Let's do contrast paints. It's just easy on everything, you, you know. Because I'm finding myself slipping, slipping down that slippery slope a little bit. Yeah, well, since we, um, I think in December last year, you and I talked about contrast paints, and um, you put me onto them. So I did my Arab, or even sorry, later earlier last year. So I did my Arab conquest in um, contra- contrast paints, and yep. yeah, more more and more of my Renaissance guys are being done in um, contrast paints. Because you get the effect quite quickly, and um, yeah. especially in the, the nice simple colours, which is what I tend to go for, like a, a bright red, um, greens, blues, and all that. When you do them on the mass, you go, well, mm. at three foot, they look pretty decent. Kind of too. works, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind yeah, of works. Yeah, they all, all look quite a, uh, quite good. So okay, those three musketeer figures you did were quite nice with the with the cloak and the cross on them. Yeah, they were quite nice. So one of the ranges, the the um, the Curacao ones, they've actually got the cross at the back of their um coat. So you can have the three musketeers. You can have some normal guys as well. So oh, come on. you mean you you mean you didn't go for the blue moon ones that look like little cartoon figures? No, I just I use this as a, as an excuse because I was in America. Oh yeah, yeah. Since yeah. I'm here, it'd be mm. rude not to bring back some miniatures. Yeah. So I did that. Yeah, I think you, you could have got Blue Moon from the States, possibly, but I suppose then that's two orders and it's getting complicated. And you're out, yeah. you're doing the guy Andy over here in um, Old Glory, aren't you, out of a business? Yeah, and since I combined them through here in the UK, I'd rather support a, a, local, um, yeah. a local supplier 
where with Kira saying you can't really get them no. without direct order. So it's like, oh, well, I'll get yeah. them. All and that kind of freaky stuff. That I've been, pay- I've been adding to the later Renaissance. So I've been um, doing up some later Renaissance pike and shot units with um, three or four pike in the background, lots of, lots of drums, a couple of sergeants with a big halberd going, right, mm. guys, let's go that way. Okay. Reg- regimental artillery. So. Um, uh, so there's been lots of tiny little guns been bought and stuck to MDF. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so yeah, yeah you can never have too many guns in my theory in no. my um, in my army so um yeah they're coming on, okay. coming on quite nicely all right and it's and it's been a 25 mil free month then for you has it just been 100 15 18 mil stuff it's like been, that yeah i've done a lot of um prepping so i've gone through quite mm-hmm. a few boxes of um and bags of vitrix um yeah macedonian pike and phalangites and um there's a few bags of Thracians, cataphracts, yep. but but nothing's been painted yet. I'm, I'm waiting for some decent weather to go do some um, spray painting. Some outdoor spray, yeah. Base coats and all that. Yeah, yeah. I must. Have, I, I snuck in some um, varnishing um, earlier this week. Um, all right. Well, let's let's rattle along. Andy, you're painting as we speak in the in the Finkel Finkel. I was going to say the Finkel painting kitchen, but then I suddenly worried about inventing a German compound word. That, um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it would mean. <laughs> Is it like uh, when you paint I imagine the German dictionary, no. every German, yeah. good German dictionary probably have the word, yeah. yeah. Um, Finkel painting, you're just throwing the paint on it in a random fashion. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I've been painting, uh, I finished off my 10 mil World War II stuff that I accidentally bought, not really realising I already had too much of it. So I finished all the infantry for British and Germans, mm. and I've just got the early war vehicles, which I did intend to buy. I've uh, okay. got them to do. But in the meantime, I'd already um, lollipopped these uh, 15 mil fortune battle Vikings. So okay. having undercoated them and slapped a bit of uh, what's the word flesh on it, I'm, I'm now you know getting around to painting yeah. them. So that that's my next. Job to get them uh, out so way. we can do a compare and contrast with Dave's Vikings, and um, and then a bit later on, he can tell you how effective they are in competition, mm-hmm. possibly. Oh well, I, I did okay with them in a competition, but there again, I've, I kind of practiced a bit. And um, whereas uh, Simon, I think he just grabbed the, dog. grabbed the box from Gordon, and he said, "Right, here are the Vikings." So he yeah. didn't have much chance to get acquainted with them before the actual competition. Yeah, and if you don't get acquainted with Vikings, they can be a bit brutal and hairy, can't they? Oh, and it, yeah. um, uh, some, some horns went the wrong place i can guarantee yes <laughs> Indeed. yes be careful which helmet you sit on so to speak yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so what what paints you know if this is the question of the week what paints are you using for those um those viking dudes just not, I, th- not, I think not, we had a conversation not, not with dave we had a conversation with dave the other week about using you were telling us last month that you were using german panzer colors or um, medieval dark age vikings because they were all sorts of the right kind of colors but <coughs> Andy, if you've just done um some some second world war tanks you may actually be able to do them in british camo colors or something like that um yeah i haven't done the tanks yet i mean i actually have a, a bottle of um panzer gray which which i'd use for the the german tanks particularly as their early war stuff before the oh yeah yeah before they before they went into dunkel gelb dunkel gelb the, the mysteries of dunkel gelb yeah. okay so, so has it been? Does that mean it's kind of been finishing off projects or new projects? Or yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's kind of finishing of off sods. projects. I, I haven't actually done a lot of painting recently. Um, the only thing I bought, I bought some stuff from Fireforge, and they kept sending me emails every five minutes saying, "We've packed it up. It's in the post. It's now on the way to the post office. Right. It's crossed the border. It's yeah. in the Swiss depot." Wow. Um, yeah, Gustav on his bike has delivered it to the val- lorry. Yeah. You know, you yeah. know, when you get all these, you it's know, string of emails, and it, it turns comes. up about. 10 days later and um uh, you know it was all very informative and um wow. you know I, I bought some ottoman uh cav ottoman cavalry but they don't have lances just just for a bit of variety mm-hmm. and some mdf stuff i got um a trebuchet uh war wagon oh yeah and, we were talking about that wagon, camp, weren't we? how, does, how does that how does that little fireforge one pan out when you've made it up does it look cool? well i haven't made it up yet that's one of the things i need to do i'm okay. trying to be disciplined and Finish stuff I've started before I right. do stuff that I've just bought. Okay. Do Do you think it will um? Do you think it will need painting if that's not a daft question? Um, um I think it probably a, would. Yeah. Probably um, would. Unless you wanted to look like sort of a just wood, you, you know, 
like it's made out of MDF. Yeah. MDF yeah. colour thing. I, I, I think it probably does need painting, yeah. OK, all right. Well, we'll, we'll come back to... Actually, we should come back to shopping later, otherwise we'll get out of seat, don't we, really? So, um, Ham's in there. What, what about you in, in a month? I'm, um, I'm just trying to recall what it was last time that was, yeah. was it, was it still most We'll come back in a half an hour's time? time when you finish. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, um, it's, well, it's last Japanese time. Japanese people. Yeah. yeah. Beer I, last time, uh, I was, a pr- it was early March. So I was beginning yeah. the, in the lo- last couple of weeks of the mm. Analog Corby's painting challenge. Oh my God! We're not going to have to go through what you did on the analog hobbies painting challenge, are we? Uh, just the last few bit. I, just the last, just few last bits. couple of weeks of it. I, Only two wasn't, weeks. Which of wasn't it. surprisingly. Not Hamilton, we've only got two deal. hours. Was this not when you were accelerating deal. towards the finish line? No. Yeah. So. But in fact, no. The big question so, is: How did you do overall in the analog painting hobbies? You know, as our representative on. Um, on I finished twenty first. Out of what? Two point eight million, something like uh, that. Or? Out of 80. What? 80. Way. It was so 80, top, no, 81. Or, okay, so that's nearly a top quarter finish. But yeah, a, it was lower than, I normally, lower than I normally finish, but that I I'd aimed for, yeah. with a lot of the stuff I was doing, it was individual figures for... Right. It wasn't mass And battle. going for higher quality than, higher, yeah. higher quality paint jobs than I normally yeah. do, sort of bulk. Okay. Bulk. Just to bash stuff out for it. Yeah, Okay. Yeah, because there's more so, effort put into the bases off, of these dead guys than um yeah, than so most some, figures that I've got to be fair. Some, Japanese, yeah. Some dead Jap- dead Japanese guys as jump off points or ambush yeah. markers or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh the Germans Japan. did a propaganda company. Propaganda theme. company. That's a German compound word as well. Maybe that's the theme of the week. Yeah. Um and who makes a German propaganda company? I got those from Colonel Bills. The Japanese uh, casualties were the assault group. Yeah. Okay, good old Stu. Yeah, and so um, figuring figuring this one is just for scale. Yeah, printed out. Wow. So one two one one to two seventy scale Type S scout ship traveler, and right. uh, r- I think it's roughly one to eight hundred scale. The little one that you can okay. see. So that so for our um for our listeners, this basically looks like someone has made a um, Imperial Star Wars Star Destroyer out of a carrot and turned it upside down. Is that is that fair, um, or is that slightly yeah. harsh? Possibly. <laughs> yes, Possibly I mean, there's, a, there's a story idea. behind. There's a bit okay. of a story behind the color scheme. Right. Okay. Then, then. Okay, that's the real deal. Right. Got you. That's real deal for twenty eight millimeter one. Yeah, that's the that's the mother. Yeah, I it, like that. Yeah. There was a bit of a bit of a <clears throat> the color scheme came out as a bit of a joke because several people in the painting challenge were doing were, were, hmm. Doing stuff for an odd skirmish game called Turnip Twenty Eight. Turnip Twenty Eight. Yeah, is this, where people is this, have been infested, this sort of... infested or infected by root vegetables. And I, I imagine that so... there's some sort of synergy with burrows and badgers on that one as well, isn't there? And, and a lot of I've people don't make it through. No idea. No. The figures okay. look hilarious, but okay, right. Surely the best army for that is the Swedes. That has joke has been made. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so good, Andy. Thank you. I've been yeah. wondering when to bring the entire yeah, so sound I, I jo- jokingly again. said in the comments, "Okay, that'd be a service." I'll, I'll, I'll join in and I will yeah. paint the twenty-eight millimeter spaceship yeah. like a like a carrot. Yes. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm not actually being unfair. Then that was a deliberate effort. No, to do that so. was absolutely wow. deliberate. That's good. That's impressive. I'm I'm pleased with that. Excellent. So you can see it, and yeah. if you can, does that does this open? You can see up? the like, nameplates. Um, the spirit of Carrotsville. Is that it? Camberwell. Camberwell. Oh, even. Oh, oh we've got a, yes. Bring me the yes, finest it, wines known to humanity. It's all good. Yep. Yep. There's an so engine. So just a, some, oh. some shots showing the yeah. interior. Wow. Pieces. All sorts of stuff in that. Yeah. It's oh, loads of very bits. detailed interior. My God, so you can have like little 28 mil people running around in that yep. and shooting each other with lasers and stuff. It looks like the Excel Centre from above, doesn't it, really? <laughs> is this yeah. all printed? Is this all printed on your printer? This is all 3D print. And you started printing this in what last last August uh, or something? I, well, I paint printed it. It took about including including reprinting bits, probably about yeah. six weeks. Uh, did wow. that last summer? Wow, wait, that is so July. Yeah, so if you were August. buying that commercially off someone, that's a real investment in their time, isn't it? That, that you you'd really have to justify paying for that, and you you would do. It's not that, that much. 
it's not that much personal time. No, printing true, the printer's just doing it. Can yeah. I just ask, when you say it took about six weeks, is that the printer going non-stop for six weeks? Or Pretty much, yeah. Oh, really? Blimey. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that thought occurred to me. I, su- I some break, I some downtime, probably. It's probably I, I averaged about 20 hours a day print, printing. Oh, my God. So um, the downtime <laughs> is when you just throw something at the printer because you can't sleep and you're just sick of the kind of noise, whatever. Well, the da- no, the downtime is where I'd put a print on and it finished and it would have finished some oh, right. point in the middle of the night. Right. You didn't set your alarm to maximise the time. Yeah. Right. And okay. how much was the, um, how much were the sort of like consumables for that? How much did it cost? Like the filament used Eight pence. by... Including, Twenty quid. including failure, failures, uh, failures, uh, fail, fa- failures, yeah. and the uh, uh, some and stuff, support yeah. material. Uh, it was free, free spools. So depends. I depends what I because I think yeah. I was getting them on a deal, cheaper deal at the time. So it was about sixteen, seventeen quid a spool. So that would have been so 50 quid. quid. Bish bosh, fifty quid. That's the cost of the electricity, of course. Yeah, I the. Yeah. Electricity is possibly more than quid. filament. Okay. So it's 100 quid to build like a spaceship you can almost walk around in yourself yeah. to all intents and purposes. Wow. Yeah. That is yeah, enormous. To go with it, it yep. I spent a lot of, quite several days in the last yeah. week or so of the challenge printing up, printing off loads of bits to... Yeah, around the um, hangar. A small yeah. backdrop mm. hangar. Yeah, but it's not quite uh, as yeah, big that as the was, ship. Yeah. That was a lot of work for very few points. Oh right! Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, the backdrop bit, three boards. Just counted ten as points. Three bits. Oh, oh, hapless. Yeah, yeah. They, oh, yeah. We need to have words with them. Just, just ring up. We'll, we'll have yeah. a phone-in campaign. Um, uh, you can see like a that. load of extra bits which are painted up to go yeah. a bit. I also spent a lot of time mm. designing and Lots making, of people. making some, I uh, some decals to go on it. Mm. For sure. And lots of little people. Yep, so, both are also filament printed. Uh, okay. I don't think, I'd, I'm not sure. We had yeah, so there's a whole crew. Post-ups. And then some of them look like they're lying down as well, sleeping. Yep, so you've got sleeping pose, seated pose, standing pose, <laughs> action pose. Wow. So are you playing a role-playing <laughs> game in which some of the characters, a, a tabletop game in which some of the characters do have to sleep or something? That's yeah, or, ju- or just for set dressing. Oh, right, okay. So they're just, just uh, yeah. And some aliens. Yep. They look like um, face huggers and eggs. Eggs, yeah, they do look like eggs and face huggers. Yeah, they they probably glue on or something like that. And there's a yeah. whole set of punters there, and a door which that spaceship is very much not fitting through. I think. Yeah, that's a hangar yeah. door, Co- yeah. warehouse hangar door. Yeah, that's that's just where you bring in yeah. the expendables. Okay, God, so that's an enormous project then. And yeah, um, and then there's some... so that was an enormous project. I so all of the stuff that you see in that photo yeah. and i i got 700 points which was just over half my total well, wow. just over, yeah just over half my total points okay. in the end so and that's in the last month then so that's <laughs> been a pretty epic project but with a with a pretty coherent theme actually though so so that's pretty good and, um, and i think yeah. you gave us a sneak preview of some stuff you bought so um yes. we know that there's I, a lot to come, there's so no, there's a lot last to come time, last time in, uh, but, I'd, yeah. but i'd ordered for block war expansion for for okay. Judge Dredd from Warlord. Well, we'll come back and to that, that came in, in a week or so ago. We'll come back to that in the shopping section then, I suspect. That's probably well, it. C- well, actually, because it's not so much shopping. This is stuff that's already... Oh, have you painted it? Well, you know, if, uh, if it's a while since we No, I haven't painted last... it yet. I've started, okay. pa- I've started painting. Took well, a bit, you can tell took us all a about it. a break after the challenge ended. Good. And now I'm on to paint, okay. painting. Well, you, you can tell us but all about it just showing the, the shopping. The three yeah. boxes, so you can see it. That's all good. Yeah. This means war. Yeah. We're talking of resident mobs, uh, Mr. Saunders. Because <coughs> we last time we spoke, you've not done painting in quite a while, but it looks like you're you're having a bit of a go at something as we speak on mute, possibly in the background, possibly also listening to Liverpool against Chelsea. I'm guessing somewhere in the background as well. But how? First up, how is that going? No, you're still on mute, Dave. You know, um, we're going to have to hear Radio Five live in the background. I think. Oh no, I didn't realise I was on the. Oh well, no. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I I still haven't been painting very much. Okay. 
And so, the football's still not quite started, has it? Oh. And, and, well, I, I don't even know. I don't think I want to know what's happening in the football. It's, well, they don't kick off until late. Chelsea and Liverpool don't kick off till late. Yeah, it's uh, not quite there yet. But I'm just sort of sitting there painting some Vikings because some of mm. my Vikings jumped ship in La Havre. They did, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. We, we don't know which... Um, they did a runner. Which Frenchman they went home with, which yeah. um, La Havre was yeah, one of those sorts of ports. As well, but never mind. So yeah. I'm actually short of some light foot uh, Vikings. So I'm actually sort of, I, I thought I'd run out of them. I thought I'd have to get another whole packet, but no. Turns out yeah. there's a few left over because I was yeah. saving you for some for rear support. And I've realised that yeah. you can't run a Viking army without rear support. So there's no point yeah. of having markers for them. So yeah. I'm just you know, doing the flesh and things on those. Yeah. Uh, but to be honest, I think I need to sweep Vikings aside. Yeah. Put them away for six months until I really need to get them and start painting something completely yep. different. Yeah, my mojo back. So I'm looking at some cataphract camels because I think that's about as far as you away from Vikings, from Vikings as you can get. Vikings as you can get. So I think if yep. I, that doesn't get my juices flowing again, I don't know what will. Yeah. Okay. So you're digging the cataphract camels out of the drawer. Tied oh yeah. The I've, also, I've, also got this, I've got this bloody wooden horse. Oh, thing. you've got the wooden horse. You've I've actually got a wooden horse it together. Oh, and it's a well, almost, yeah. It's kind of, it's got a few holes in yeah, there. Yeah, a bit of stuff throat, to fill. If yeah. there was anybody hiding inside it, they'd be completely visible. They would, yeah. They can probably <laughs> peek out or something like that. So, but so we're going to give that a go as well. So the mojo is about to start then, potentially. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, okay then. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, you were talking about World War Two. Yeah. So we've got German field grey. Yeah. <laughs> German uniform. Yeah. Collective green, which is their sort of camouflage. Middle yep. stone. Mm -hmm. Luftwaffe blue. Yeah. And uh, German World War II camouflage base. I find these colours really valid. They're fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Really good for your dark age guys. Yeah, exactly. They're really the tops. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, good. Um, I think it's just looking around. So to just thinking, so obviously um, I was there when some of those guys disappeared, but um, yeah, um, which is a whole other story. Maybe we'll come to later, but, but I guess over the last month or so, there's been all sorts of bits and pieces um, that have kind of gone across my paint desk and, um, and some of them um, have made it onto the blog and, and the website. Um, some of them I've kind of offloaded to you a little bit. I, I finished two lots of, of the Corvus Belli um, medieval figures from that box set, which I've got a sort of <clears throat> recollection we talked about quite a bit last month. So maybe I was in the middle of doing them about how <clears throat> how the Siocast figures are basically it's just a different material. Did did we have this conversation? Should we have listened to? I them think you mentioned that they're the ones you picked up for a tenner at Warfare. Yeah, I had. I picked them up for a tenner. Had I started them last month? Or um, um, not quite sure. I can't remember. Did we, sure. have the, we had the conversation, but I can't remember whether it's on the pod or on the um, WhatsApp group. All right. Oh, maybe then. Um, uh, well, let's assume we talked about it on the pod. I, used, um, I, I know that I've, I've seen you posting them up on Yeah, Facebook, I posted them up on uh, Facebook. Your website. So, yeah, exactly. So so you can read about it. And the gist of it is um, they're really nice figures because the Corvus Belli figures are really nice. Um, I think they're early edition Siocast. So they're quite soft. They're surprisingly soft, um, as in probably softer than Airfix Soldier soft. Um, but these figures seem to work quite well. I've seen some different ranges that the plastic just didn't really seem to squeeze into the moulds particularly well. But but these are kind of chubby little round guys, and it, it works quite well. So once they're painted up, they do look just the same as normal ones. Um you can paint them on the sprue. Yes, we did have a conversation, I think, actually last month because we talked about Adam. You were talking about getting rid of the flash with a, a using a hot um, a hot, hot wire hot, or something. Hot it? wire or something like that. Um, it's oh, not not no, last, that wasn't last time. I think it was time. Might have been the time before. Time before maybe I painted them bloody ages ago. Then yeah. Mm. Well, look, they're done and they look lovely. Um, mm. And I just think it's just a different material. Um, so it's not really any different to metal either way, to be honest, as long as they work all right. Um, I banged out some samurai bowmen, which were museum figures, which were really clean and simple and, and nice. I think, Simon, we were talking about that um, at the weekend, how how nice the museum figures look. Um, they're not as detailed as the 
uh, these old school museum figures, they're not mm. as detailed as the um, old glory samurai that I've got for the main part of the army. But I had that part of the army painted professionally. And these are sort of Ashigaru in um, in kind of just tops and shorts and stuff. So it was easy for me to paint them because there's not much detail on them. And if you paint samurai with three little blobs of colour in a triangle, um, it looks like you've done a clever pattern um, mm. on them, which is kind of kind of quite cute. Um, and then I, I did some um, Roman Clivinarii from Forged in Battle um, that took paint amazingly well. They're really deeply sculpted figures, and and I did them with kind of a mix of normal paints and and contrast paints, and they they really really came up really well for mounted Roman sort of impact slash bow cavalry, um, a, a pack of four. And I think Forged in Battle always put a couple of unless I've just been lucky, but Forged no, in Battle always, always a couple seems, of extra. You, you occasionally get a few extra figures. Yeah, yeah so I got I think, three extra riders which are all generals oh. and commanders and two extra horses, I think. And so I managed to sneak general out of it as well as having the the proper unit. Well, the four bases of um, three, which was kind of cool um, as well to, to do that. And then there's some, um, and I did some unarmed slaves because I realized that the Spartacus army that I did needed some bases of levy and, um, and I'd not actually, well, no, it needed some bases of unarmed levy rather than arm levy. I didn't have any, so I got some from Donington and and some from Zeiston through Donington, which was surprisingly compatible. And I think actually the Donington unarmed Roman civilians were even nicer than the Zeiston ones, which um, is kind of pretty cool um, as well. So so they're they're sat there and they're kind of due to go out on the the blog once I do some photos of them and, and get them out in a couple of weeks. But but I think a lot of the other stuff I've been doing has just been traveling around and and doing events um and doing some actual real holiday stuff but um and, um and some of that was events on the south coast which is which is mr warsdale that's your territory what what have you been up to in the painting front well i'm actually quite pleased i, I was i'm a bit sad to go after tamsin because i was going to mm. say oh i've done loads and then i heard tamsin and it's like oh right i've done not very much really yeah. but i've done loads for me um i've done the bulk of my uh french 25 mil late medieval french army so oh my um, god wow i did um the perry box of um they've got they call it wards of the roses infantry yeah so i did four bases of six longbow as my audience are yeah. archers and i um they came out really well because they're sort of like mixed figures quite a few of them have got tabards or whatever they're called yeah. so i could get to do them in sort of like ordnance uniforms so I've done them all with a French white cross, but each base has got a different company colour, so it, yeah. they look similar but different. And um, they're really nice figures. Some are shooting, some are knocking, some are standing around looking hard. Yeah. Um, and there's extra things in, so there's clumps of arrows, a couple of clumps of arrows on the front of each base. So all, all, they all look really good. Yeah. Um, I then did two bases of uh, Volgiers, which is okay. basically French for Billman. Um they're not as good. Okay. Um because um firstly, hmm. most of the boxes that Perry do for this late medieval, they sort of like deliberately make it so you can do several different nations, whereas this yeah. one, they're only armed with bills. Okay. So my French should have Volgues, but they got bills. So it's not a big and I've gone with it and some I cut off and stuck um on other ends from other boxes. Um, which was like that was a bit mm, okay. Um, I managed to get seven on a base, which I was pleased with. There's no way there's eight getting on there, but no, no, seven there makes it, not at all. Not at all. Seven makes it look really hefty. But the thing I didn't like about it was um, most of their arms, they're sort of like holding the bill, just holding it to the left. There's a couple yeah. with upright, but most of it is just holding to the holding it to the left. And when you put them on the bodies, most of the bodies are sort of like standing or not going very yeah. far. Um, so I get the sense with that box, it's like a box of archers and almost as an afterthought, they went, oh, let's do some billmen as well. Okay. Because when um, the Swiss I did out of the mercenary box with the pole arms, I sort of like put six on the medium base and I did them as, in a wedge as a keel and they look like yeah. they're going forward. They look like they've got a tent. Whereas these two bases, they just kind of look like they're standing there holding a okay. bill. Yeah. Which is and, the, and these are the these are the French plastic guys then? Or... Yeah, 
Yeah, well, it's, okay. in, it's supposed to be English for the Roses. I mean, okay. and they're fine. They're a solid yeah. six, maybe seven. But yeah. when you compare it to all the other Perry stuff, they've mm. got movement and intent and yeah. they look good. These are just a bit stayed, really. So I think, um, yeah, it's, it's more of a box of arches with an afterthought yeah. of have some close order. And they look fine. They look like what they are. They look like they'll give you good hand-to-hand combat, probably get beaten by knights. Yeah. Um, but they're good. But um, that was a bit, oh, they're not as good. Then I did um, five bases of foot knights. Um, I could only get six to a base on them because I tried putting on seven and it just looked like one was hitting the other one in the back of the head with an axe. And he was hitting his sword in his ear and stuff. So there's Mm. only six. But um, again, that was, they look good. They look like they're doing what they're doing, sort of like foot knighty choppy stuff. Um, Painted them by spraying them chainmail silver. Um, so, So they were quite quick. Quick, and I'm just on to the um my bases of sort of like light horse and supporty calf. So yeah, um, that was all quite exciting. I'm really pleased that I've got so much done in such wow. a short amount. So of is time. this like suddenly an army that's ready to go, or um? Well, I'm just doing now. I'm doing uh general bases, and there were six crossbows left over from the mercenary. So I'm going to do a base yeah. of crossbow because yeah. you might need them. You always need I and then... some pavises on them or something, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, it's always like. I, I might not but it's just like they'll, they'll yeah. be the backup in case yeah. I need an extra base for um, because I'm swapping things out. Um, and then I just need to do a cannon, which um, mm. I'm going to get from enjoyment because yeah. I I think the army's probably better without a heavy artillery, but it's it's an ordinary You've got to have one. Oh, You've got to have one. one, yeah, for sure. Um, and then, um, then the baggage, which I'm going to get the uh, medieval tents from, um, is it powder? Madison oh, oh, R- Renendra, is it? No, the tents. No, not Renendra. Oh, Bowada. Um, okay. do them. Because um, weirdly enough, um, I was going to get a wagon from Perry's, mm. but they, a lot of their non plastic stuff, they don't let retailers sell. Mm. So you can yeah. only buy it direct, which is a bit yeah. of a pain. And their mm. post and packaging is mentally expensive. They basically yeah. charge 25% of yeah. the price with no upper limit. Um, yep. and the cannon I can get from Entoyment, so I'll get that from Entoyment, yep. and I thought, I was going to get the wagon, but then I thought, no. And yep. um, so the tents um, from Madison Millington are a better idea, plus yep. it means that I get to order some 10 mil World War II stuff as well, because ah. I'm more Madison Millington, so yeah. it would be rude not to. I suppose it would, yeah. They get some cute little chubby, I've got some cute little chubby German officers from them. I think their little infantry range is quite nice on, on that one. And I I need some to because I've got I've got I've got a few fur I've got a few tanks so I just because um, yeah. I think as you know I've got about uh, three metric shit tons of Russians yeah uh, no, so I yeah. need I need a few more Germans uh, to fight them yeah you want the German so. officers Adam I've got far too many than I need I can just send you a few uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah sure Brilliant. Yeah. thanks okay. um, well yeah. so an effective an effective session of painting for you then this um this, this oh, session and, as well. On the offering stuff out, um, one mm. good thing about the Perry boxes is they give loads and loads and loads of banners yeah. that you can use as banners. So if anyone's yeah. ever doing a late medieval army, um, yeah, I've got uh, as long as you don't want sort of like the Oriflame or sort of like a fleur de lis. If you're doing yeah. Burgundy or German, I've got loads of banners and they're really nice as well. Yeah. So um, I just, I can be your bannerman. Okay. All right. Oh, good. Oh, well, that's something to look forward to. Then good. Well, I think um, I think that's has all gone gone all around the houses and um and we're done and dusted with painting then so on with the music all right well let's we're now on to the um now on to the incoming section we've done the the brushed up section we've got the incoming section because there's always stuff being bought and there's um always interesting stuff being bought and um let's let's start top right with well top right for me with mr saunders have Ooh. you um been tempted to get or is, is your shopping kind of delving in your drawers and just pulling out um cataphract camels yes um yes. I've, I've got... you're shopping for stuff you've already got i think i've actually got still got quite a bit of stuff from warfare last year Wow, okay. Funny, yeah, yeah. That's yeah quite I've still got four heavy chariots, biblical heavy chariots to do. Yeah. Uh, three packets of camels from Forged in Battle mm. to do. Yeah, no, my, yeah. my 
the lead pile is full. Yep. I've actually cleaned off, Sam, so mm. I've cleaned off your printies. Oh, right. I oh, the printed made guy. a start of them. They're funky, actually. They're quite yeah. good. Yeah. But, um, actually, I mean, for, well, you've already got it primed and started painting. Uh, I've, I've actually come across a, a trick ah. With, okay. with 3D, with filament printed ones, yeah. which is to give them a cut, I before priming, mm. give them a couple of cut or give them a couple of, couple of thin coats of Mod Podge. Mod, Mod Podge. Podge. Yeah, it's a, it's a type of PVA, PVA mixed with mm. a, acrylic medium. Mm. Okay. Is that something you so, just invented? No. <laughs> it, it's it's it. something yeah. you, can, you can buy it, you can buy it in craft shops, like yeah. stationery shops, yeah. online. So you can get it from Ryman's. What's it called? Mod Podge. Not one of these German compound words then, no? No. No, no that'd be like, and yeah. I, okay. Because it self-levels a bit, and a couple of thin coats will will, will fill easily. Do, fill do you need to thin it, or is it quite, do you need to thin it, or is it quite thin? Or It brushes on reasonably, reasonably thinly. I mean, okay. Just Mod don't get Podge. huge, don't get a huge glob on your brush, I So to speak, yeah. Do it. Yeah. Okay. Right. And... Um, if if there's any sort of deep recesses like cows, uh, yeah, cows of hoods, I try to I try to clear out any yeah. pooling because yeah. it will run down a bit. Okay, but right. it dries fairly quickly, cures fairly quickly. So so this is the magic ingredient to make three D printed stuff look like it's not three D printed. Essentially, it gets rid of my. It hides yeah. most of the layer lines. I haven't no, I haven't tried magic, washes yeah. on. I haven't tried okay. washes on the figures to see right. that. But yeah, yeah. That's, okay. that, it, it certainly takes out the worst of the layer lines. Hides the yeah. worst of the layer lines. Okay. All right. Well, Mod Podge then. Um, so, Dave, you, it looks like you've missed the Mod Podge stage on that guy, but he's yeah, um, that's what I need otherwise he's otherwise I, he's off and running. I, you could potentially do do I do it before you start painting the robes and so on. I think yeah. it looks so like you've only done a little bit of the painting. Uh, yeah, on those ones it is. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, um, salute's coming up. Yeah. So what do you think? What's you got your eye on for salute? Paints, I think. I think I need new red leather, Vallejo red leather. I've used up those. Um, I'm not, there's not. I don't think there's a lot of the, the historical. I mean, I, I imagine Forged in Battle will be there. Mm, I think so. Yeah. Not going. Is Forged he? in Battles, West Wind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. West Wind. Yeah, yeah, they're there. I'm yeah, I think there's West Wind, Magister Militum, and Eureka. Um, I think are kind of the main uh, fifteen Eureka. mil guys. Eureka's. Yeah, there might be some need for some Eureka stuff. Yeah, Eureka so UK. Quite who's, selling, who's selling Eureka in the UK these days? There's a company Eureka called Eureka UK. UK. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a new company, right? Yes, yes. yes. But they, yeah. sell, they sell all sorts of different Moves things. Moves in the name, really. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know it existed. I know I know they used to... I know Fighting 15s used to be their agents, but... Um, they did, yeah. A few yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I Nick found somebody in the UK to... Yeah. But I also think Eureka come over themselves, don't they, to salute... Quite often. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. but I think yeah. now they've got a UK arm, maybe not. We'll, but we'll find out in a few weeks' time, I guess. Yeah, I've um, seen um, Nick Robson from Eureka, Australia. He's been over every now and then. He's being English. He, I think, he uses the trip to come over and say hi to family and okay. tell some toys and bushes and drink some beer. Yep. So proper wargamer, basically. Okay. All right. Proper trip. Good. So, so that's so you're looking paint and some. See what Eureka have got on their stall. Yeah, I've got pre-order. a whole load of AB miniatures to paint up, which I bought online. Someone's yeah. unpainted, got a bargain. So there's 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 a plenty in the lead mile, lead pile, but yeah. especially as I'm feeling a little bit, I'm in one of my luck luster areas. But that's just it, that'll pass. It will just yeah. I mean, it's got to give those troughs a, a weight, and then you come back at it flying, don't you? Yeah, yeah. no, I suppose so. Actually, you just get into a project like like Simon did this month, or Adam's just done, and suddenly it's like. Yeah, boom, boom, and, and it's yeah. off and running. Okay, All right. Well, Andy, what about you? What's um, what have you got a salute plan? Have you got anything? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, well, I haven't been to salute for years. So I've got the opportunity to go this year, so I'm looking forward just to see really what 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 there is to see. I mean, I think in terms of particular buying plans, it might be some miniature ships if I can find some of the right scale. Mm. Um, I've started playing Nimitz. We played it last night. It went really yeah. well. And yeah, I've heard really good things like, about that. Really good things. Yeah, it it well, yeah. If you get yourself organised in the way you roll the dice, you can go really quickly. I mean, four of us, none mm. of us had actually played a game before, did yeah. the basic starting scenario last night. We finished it within an hour. Okay, and does it? You know, because we've had that discussion about Rommel before, but does Nimitz feel more like a game rather than a board game, or 
that, that was my that's my big issue with Rommel. Uh, I just um, can't get my head around why it's not a kind of tricksy board game. But I I, I wouldn't think so. No, I mean it, it it's I mean it does the kind of things that you'd expect with a naval warfare, but it just does it in a very streamlined fashion. I think okay. the, the whole I mean if you want if you're a real sort of detailed type guy as to you know well we all know that the Bismarck had six inch armor here and five inch armor there and a shell wouldn't hit yep. it from two miles away type of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the game for you, but okay. if you want to, I mean, you know, because part of, p- part of the attraction is the campaign game and, and Jeff and I are going to try that and see how it goes where basically, you know, you, you, you some of your task hmm. forces bump into each other. You then transfer it to the table and fight it out using Nimitz. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, you know, you what want, you, ships you want some... are you thinking of getting? Pardon? What ships are you thinking of getting? Well, I've got, I, I've, I've got the British German, I've got a load of British German and Italian ships in one three thousandth. So it's just kind of filling in some of the gaps in that, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And All then right. So you're going. What else is worth buying? Isn't there some sort of weird thing about ground scale or something in Nimitz that you play? The... Yeah, but there's always been ground scale issues in any mm, naval, naval game. Naval game. Because if, you, yeah. if you're going to do it in proper scale to the ships. You'd need to hire the Albert Hall to do it properly. Yeah. Okay. With holes in it or something. So, do you think three thousand scale is? is yeah, is, it, it does. I mean, you, you know, in in in, in Nimitz, the um, the gunnery ranges are twelve inches and twenty four inches for big guns. Okay. And if you use one three thousand scale ships, your battleships are about four inches long. It, it, it okay. looks like mine they're on a base. So, mm. um, it, you know, it it does look. Little bit odd in terms of ground scale, but no more yeah. two than no more then, so than you know World War Two tanks. No, it's for um, my World War Two naval stuff. I went for the one six thousand Hallmark stuff, so that even the battleships are quite small. But if it's not your main project and you're not want- <laughs> wanting to model beautiful ships, I think they look quite good. And the ground scale is starting to look almost decent, um, and they're not too expensive. So if it's not your main sort of project, it's quite good to, yeah. to get a game on. I think. Yeah. No, I mean, I've been quite impressed with it so far in terms of how it's written and and how it plays. So the basic game. So we'll see how the campaign works, but it's, it's something I'm looking forward to having a go at. So. Um, okay. Uh, so so really going to um, salute. It's going to be seeing if I can, if I can pick up anything there. And otherwise, just see who's there and, you know, saying hi to people. Yeah. OK. All right. Tamsin, have you got a an old posties meet up at Salute um, planned in? Um, I'm not sure. I, I haven't seen any, but anybody okay. are sort of arranging a bloggers meet up okay. at Salute. Uh, has, has blogging kind of, is blogging still a thing? Because I, I don't get yeah. many comments now. Well, no, because I, I, on my I don't website. Get, no, I don't get as many comments as you used no. to. I I think a lot of people have switched Twitter just and Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, a lot. Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and Facebook, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Facebook, but still do get people commenting on the blog, yeah. and a lot of people still post on their blogs. So yeah, no, you know, I think I, I use mine as kind of a, a diary of what I'm doing, but yeah, but the, the that's comments what I on do. it have just dropped off a cliff, really, um, mm. over the last year or so. But um, so, but bloggers are still a, a community, but you probably chat to each other on Twitter or something yeah. else. Yeah. Okay. So. So, is there anything you've got in the shopping um, target list then? For um... Um, few few bits and bobs, I general stuff. I nothing really on the fi- fi- I sort of figures yeah. front. Yeah. Though I have I have placed I think smaller last last yeah. week or week before announced the pre order for the for the second wave of Block War. Oh stuff. right, okay. So you've got a load more Judge Dread stuff to coming your way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My I sort of it's Judge Dread birthday World. present to myself. Which okay. is, I think it's they got it down for my collection. One of your yeah. pre-order collect, collection options is collect at salute. Oh, and there'll be a lot of people walking out with that stuff then, I bet. Yeah. So whether, yeah. whether they've got it goes on general sale at salute as yeah. well. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'll be interesting then. So, so my, mostly it'll be. I think one bit I want to look at hmm. is the my mats from Deep Cut. Yeah. Okay. Or others, just see. yeah, if yeah, because deep cut don't come over to many shows. I think they come over to salute and um, warfare, partisan. and that's about it. Um, not even sure they do partisan actually. It might do, but but they, I there's think only they have couples. done partisan. Maybe they have done partisan, partisan in the past. Actually. Yeah, and uh, they don't come over to many, but they do come over with stock. So um, I think we're trying to do something with them um, at Britcon um, to do some sort of post free 
pre-order type thing that we're trying to work up for, for people who are going to that. So mm-hmm. look out for news of that on in the foreseeable future once we tie it down. So yeah, okay. So you could be walking out with a mat under rolled under your arm and a load of um Judge Dread boxes clanking in a in a warlord's box. In, yeah, well, world's I, salute box. I wasn't I, I wasn't certain whether I would would be going to salute. Yeah. Okay. So I I put down for courier delivery. I might I might change now that you I am going to salute. So we'll, to I might change sooner. that. Yeah. Might change that. Wow. Okay. But apart from that, I maybe a couple of terrain. Look at a couple of terrain bits and yep. so on. And maybe oh, it's probably going to be a couple of paints. I look to see if anybody's got individual pots of. Yep. So I want to try either Vallejo Express color paints. Oh yes, yeah, that's the new stuff, and isn't it? Yeah. The new and Army Painters Speed Paint Two. Two, which isn't 2. supposed to run, I imagine. Which, which isn't supp- which is supposed to have fixed, yeah. fixed the, the issue reactivation it. issue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. From reviews I've seen, it seems to have. I just want to okay. get a couple of a couple of couple of colours. Yeah, give those go. to try them. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, I just think, from my point of view, what have I got? I may actually miss Salute because. Um, because Fulham Leeds is on that day and it's 12.30 kickoff. So that's like one o'clock, two o'clock. In, and do I really want to schlep all the way across to East London for 3.30 just to go around the dog end of Salute? Um, but the only advantage is, is Salute open till four or five? Because everybody goes oh. for t- till four. Oh, no, then. Um, but everybody, everybody goes at 10 o'clock. There's an enormous queue. It's really, really busy until 12.31. And then it tails off immensely, but all the traders are still there and you can get to their stands. Mm. So yeah. to my mind, I just can't get my head around why people don't go, well, I'll go at two um, or half one or something like that and just stroll in. Everybody queues for, for 10 o'clock for their two and a bit hours of salute and then then buggers off. And there isn't a question of stuff being sold out or anything, is there? There's not special yeah. trade offers or... Mm. Sometimes no? you miss out the, um, often we'll salute, we'll have like the free model. So if you're the first 5,000 visitors, you get the little 25 mil model that made that, that week. But, uh, but, you know, three hours of my life in a queue versus going onto eBay and buying it for a fiver the next day. So, well, actually, that answers my next question, which is what time should I rock up? So I reckon it would be about 12, half 12, something like that. Oh, you're strolling and it'll be sort of yeah. calming down. Right, after, I after half 10. After half 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anytime okay. after half 10, 11. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's most, sort of... uh, most times that Dave, Dave Saunders and I have rocked up, we normally arrive midday-ish, so mooch around yeah. for an hour, then we get attacked by a pub and um, rehydrate yeah. pints. Yeah, there you're uh, done, aren't you? Rather than hanging like like, through, being in the queue for two hours just to get in there first, not happening, mm. don't care. No, can't be fussed. No, actually, the only other thing I bought or am buying or in the process of buying is um, a mate of mine is doing an order from Peter Pig, so... Um, that's coming to me to ship onto him out of the country. And um, I've added Peter Pig have just released a couple of packs of Macedonian pikemen and commanders um, that, you know, I don't need them at all, but um, they, l- I like the Peter Pig style of figures. So I thought if someone else is ordering, I'll order a couple of packs and see what they're like and, um, and kind of add them to my, you know, set of too many pikemen already. So, um, so I will potentially have some of Peter Pig's brand new, two pack strong Hellenistic range um ready to um talk about next month possibly as long as they come and um and they paint up quite easily which I suspect they will because they're kind of you know almost sort of mini Zeiston-esque figures in terms of the depth of the the castings and all that sort of stuff. So that should be um kind of interesting and see if that range develops any more really from um from from the guys at Peter Pig. So um let me think who else we got? So, do a whole range. Well, presumably, I can't imagine it's going to be, you know, a pack, of, to, pack yeah. of two people. So, and they've got Parthians and a couple of Germans and a couple of other bits as well. So they've got Romans, Republican Romans or late, later Imperial Romans. So they've got bits and bobs, but it's interesting to see them starting up a um, a kind of classical range, which isn't something they've really looked at for a, an awful long time. So on that one. So, Simon, you talked about your salute arrival strategy. Have you got anything that you've got in mind in the shopping queue as well? 
Not particularly. Um, I can see myself getting attacked by heroics and Ross miniatures because yeah. um, there's a new version of Cold War Commander. So yeah. not that I need more, like most war gamers, I don't need any more 6 mil. But yeah. while they're there, maybe a 6 mil um, uh, C-130 or something along those lines. Okay, just yeah. Flesh out the army. Um, yeah. And I think to some degree, it might, it's just going to be enjoyable to wander around and see, especially after COVID, see what traders have come in or have come along what they've brought what new toys mm. they've brought um i'm half tempted by some of the random sci-fi ranges like from corpus yeah. Billion, but um because osprey have released um the new version of dragon rampant called xeno rampant yeah so that's, that's true yeah generic sci-fi skirmisher model and it might give me the excuse to buy some of those uh half ever you know ridiculously overpriced yep. mecha robots which i'm renowned for um, but if I only need one or two, one or two might fall yeah. in the bag and come home with yeah. me. And yeah, that's true. Just, just the look. Yeah, I suppose that's the advantage of a show, isn't it? You can, you can pick out some of those kind of mecha models that you wouldn't do necessarily browsing a website where there's the pay the credit card, do the postage, yeah. you know, did it for for two models, that sort of thing. Interesting. Also, if anything to fancy, like um, a couple of salutes ago, you know, you're walking past and I found like you know. Um, um, Bad Squid Games was there, so I bought yep. some models because I had um, a whole bunch of bunny rabbits armed with carrots. And so, yeah, I fancy, as especially with my email address, mm. uh, various my um, continual habit of chewing on carrots. Yeah, occasionally you find some bonkers models, you just go, Yeah, I've got to have that. Just yep. doesn't, I don't know why, I just need to have one. So, yeah, yeah, okay. I, All I right. bought a Viking Commander, a Bad Squid one at Beachhead last year of a shield maiden. A uh, rather mm. tight, large 25 mil figure carrying a sort of severed head. So yeah. a nice, nice thing to yeah. add to your Viking army. Yeah. I okay. had a look at those recently for the Vikings. They are quite funky. Yeah. yeah they were, uh, that was an idea. I think yeah. the painting competition at Salute's really good as well. The cabinet's full of painting competition. That's always good fun. Yeah. And okay. uh, they've got a load of talks at various points throughout the day mm. this year. Oh, right. That would be an interesting experiment because because I'm just sort of skeptical that actually works. Yeah, um, uh, war gaming shows. Um, you know, they did know it at Beachhead, um, yeah. and they've done it for a few years at Beachhead, so they must get some response. Possibly, it's it's know, maybe it's one of those things you say is a good idea, and people go along, and then they don't go along. But I don't know. There's a story at Beachhead doing things, wasn't there? Yeah, down in the okay. basement, but no one knows how well it's been received uh yeah no comment yeah interesting one well okay. they've done it for more than one year so yeah true so it must must be something maybe it does work right. yeah interesting all right adam what about you you're um you've got buying on the horizon now you've finished an army well i do and i'm after some advice as well but first up i would just like to say salute my plan for salute is um just don't really just say yeah. no i mean kensington channel lovely olympia willing to do that but it's like, it's like, what even bloody tube line is it on? I just can't be. Uh, it's, it's now, it's now oh, on the Elizabeth, Elizabeth line. line. You can, you can take the Elizabeth from line now. All the what way line? The Elizabeth line, direct from Reading. Oh, that, that's I, I've left London since before. That. It's like that's just, <laughs> science that's fiction. Rumor it, it doesn't yeah. exist as far as I'm concerned. Science fiction. So. It's but, it's uh, my, next army, my next army. So I'm going to do uh, late imperial Roman. So I'm going to roll that on to doing partition as well because there's a lot of crossover figures. Um, and if I do the precision, I'm going to get some bow arm Romans. Yep. Um, so I'm also going to do early Byzantines as well. So like, Okay, yeah. Special three set. for one, buy one and a half armies, get three sort of yep. deal. Yeah. Um, so Is this 28s or 15s? 28s. 28s, okay. Because um, I've already got, and I must have bought them when they're on sale, I've got a load of, um, is it... Is it Gripping Beast that did the old... Yeah, they did. Boxes? Yeah, yeah. So I got Heavy and Light Cav and some fur. And mm. also War Games Atlantic did. Yeah. Um, so I got a box of them as well. So that's all my sort of like com Roman combat for sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. advice I'm after is this, because I'm bugging if I can paint the shield designs. Yeah. Um, so it's just not going to happen with my skills. Yeah. So I need to buy some. Mm. Um, but... The um little big man, they sell. I think they sell the foot ones in packs of twenty four. So I don't want all my auxilia in this, with the same shields. I want sort of like different shields. And 
I know some people, I can't remember who, was it Vanni mm. Vidivici did sort of like transfers for Roman Shield. So just, yeah. and like even this sort of like the horse, um, yeah. I'm going to have 12 close order and probably four skirmishy type horse, maybe six. Mm. And I don't want them all with the same shield. Same shield pattern. So, has anyone yeah. got any idea for? Oh, yeah. So, I might only want four of one or three of one shield pattern. Okay. Um, any any idea for who might do something that's useful? Is yeah. it is it battle flag? Am I thinking is that the one who did uh, flags um, of war? Flags of war, battle the flag, war flag. Is that it? No, so no, right battle with... flag, battle flag. It's wargametransfers.com. dot com. Is that the um? So what do they do then? And they do water slide transfers for Victrix Early Imperial Roman, Victrix Greeks, Victrix Gallic, Agema Early Imperial Roman, Early Imperial Roman Cavalry, and their water slide in packs of 12 that fit First Cause and other people's possibly. Um, but yeah, wargametransfers.com. Um, what else do they do? Um, do they do things for Fireforge? Um Dark Ages, Victrix Vikings, Fireforge Byzantine Infantry. They do mm. some quite funky oh. Scutata shields. Um, that might, that might work, although it might, it might be, be a bit late, so I need it sort of Romany as yeah. well. Yeah, they might be. I think if you want very, very late Romany, then um, Little Big Man do a kind of a random um, set <laughs> of like Chi Row ones that are all different. Yeah, yeah, that's they, really, really late. Want them, I want them to look like units, like maybe two yeah. bases being the same unit. So I don't want yeah. 24 all of the same, and I don't want 12 different ones. I want uh, there's a unit with the Chiro, there's a unit with the Eagles, there's a unit with the little roundy things, with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Little things. Um, um, I'm not sure it's possible. I yeah, argue possibly. the Benny Vidi Vici ones are quite good. Okay. Mm. But I think, don't Little Big Man do a sort of Arthurian one? Yeah, that might have been the one I had, actually. Yeah, um, so the Arthurian is sort of more mixed up, which is, I think, is yeah. what you're after, Adam. No, actually, the late Romans are in 12s. Yeah. Oh, so are they? For 25 mil, yeah, because you don't get 24 on a sheet. They're in 12s. So that you might. may actually be all right with LBMS. That sounds just what you want. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah that, that they're works three quid. Good, again, for the mounted, I might get... Um, the Venny Vinny Vici water slide because it's like yeah. if I've got four yeah. mounted cab, I want them in sort of like either two groups or maybe even four groups. Yeah, so yeah, you do. It's one's an individual unit, three, 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 three. Yeah. rather than them all looking like they're in the same unit. But yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking. But yeah, but. I think they do things for Plastic Lake Rome. Oh, Plastic Lake Roman Cavalry. They'll do. They do an absolutely mixed set, completely mixed. Or they do a twelve um, of each one. So it's mm -hmm. entirely possible. So you may be able to get. Um, to be able to not waste too much stuff of, of any BD Rich and only three quid a sheet that seems cheaper than yeah. I remember them. Actually. That's not too bad. I thought they used to be a lot more than that. Anyway. Yeah. Next next mm. advice, and this is more gaming and shopping advice. Yeah. With the petitions I'm going to do an ally because I yeah. want it to be different to uh, the late yeah. Imperial. Yeah. What would be better? Heavy impetuous for six of them or five heavy impetuous for elite? What do you reckon? Sorry, five elite. <laughs> But you, don't you get six, and then if you're using five elite, you just call them, you don't use one of them, and say these are elite. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll probably yeah. buy enough to do six. Yeah, but it's yeah. Like so it's gaming. On the um, table. I, I think elite is is the thing to go for, because the other ones They'll are... They live longer. The mm. other ones are just a bit of a roadblock, but mm. they can go down. Um, but yeah, the an ally, which, just, one, which is a general included... Yeah, because yeah, yeah. a general included can also because you can also have one or two armored. So a general oh. uh, armored mm. elite included general. Well, sound. I think arm, armor might, from my experience at the weekend, armor might mm. almost be overkill because people are going to drive cataphracts at them. <laughs> it's the okay, kind of thing. <laughs> so the armor's sort of a bit wasted, you know. Uh, um, and how did uh, your included generals do? Um, I had no, I didn't have included generals because I thought they were going to die. So I, okay. I didn't have any included yeah. generals at the weekend. Um, Whereas so, an ally, Adam, I I think an, an included generals a good yeah. idea. If it's an ally, maybe yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, Just no save yeah. points. I and mean, the, the whole true. point of having them as an ally rather than the internal hairy Germans is you can yeah. include yeah. the general really. Yeah, exactly. Um, I might do that. Go and fight. Yeah. 
Another thing that I noticed that I've also kind always kind of known, but it came home to me a couple of days ago was when I was in toyment, just how expensive plastic figures are now. Right. Okay. I, I was sort of like looking around in toyment because my mm. girl was doing a county cricket training yeah. standard right. That was like my waiting room. Mm. And um, I looked at uh, Victrix have got a new Parthian light horse, Scythian light horse, sort yeah. of like pattern. I looked and I went, oh, that's that's quite nice. And for 12, it was um, 27 quid. Okay. Which is kind yeah. of more than two pound a plastic figure, which is still a lot cheaper than the metals, it must be said. Mm. But that's, yeah. starting get, that's starting to get to that isn't it's a bargain. expensive, that is. Yeah. That's, yeah so, um... it's, so it's now it's a case of. You can only buy a pack of plastic figures if you can lose them all. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I can see what but, you're saying with that one. Yeah. Um, and, no, uh, that's, and I thought, are they particularly expensive? And I looked around and no, they aren't. That's kind of yeah. the price point yeah. now, which is like, oh, that's, oh, on this note, um, by the way, yeah. I was going to get, um, for my early Imperial Romans to round them out, I was going to get a couple of bases of boats. So I need 12 boats, but they sell them in box of 24s. Sorry, 12 so 12 what? Boats? Going off on 12 early what? Imperial- what type of uh, boats? Ro- ro- early Imperial Roman bowmen. Oh, on, I've got two. Um, I've got two bases of them, twelve um, that I got from Jeff. But I can um, pass on to you because I've already got loads. Like they, they're already painted. They're done. Twenty-five you mil. Can, yeah, twenty-five mil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, that yeah. that's that's an even that's better. Done. I can dig them out. Yeah. I've I've got too many. Jeff didn't want them. I picked them up off him when we were doing all the Clive malarkey, and I've been thinking, what do I use them for? Because I've already got some. So they're yours. Done. And they're early Imperial Romans. Yeah, they are. I think they might are they metal? Um or are they heavily based plastics? But yeah, no, no they're they're fine. Yeah, they look absolutely fine. One thing when I was sort of starting to plan the uh, early Imperial Roman armies, Vitrix have got some um new late Imperial Romans coming out. Yeah. Which is um they're slightly too late. Sorry, yeah, but I can't because I've already got stuff. But you know with the gripping beast Romans. At first, mm. I thought, "Fuck, there's too many bowmen in this box." Yeah. Excuse my yeah. language. Yeah. Jesus, there's too many bowmen in this box. Yeah. Um, but because there's sixteen, and I thought that's just too many. Yeah. But then I started doing some sums. Mm. I'll have a base of bowmen because it might be useful. Yeah. So that's six. That's down to ten. Mm. A couple of bases of skirmishers. That's down to six. Yep. Six tokens to show rear support. Actually, they're yeah. all used. You've all used them, yeah. Well, so I think I had two of those box sets, but I ended up cuttings because because they're plastic and it's it's a weird one you kind of forget that they're plastic and what you can do with it but um i ended up snipping off the hands at the wrist and then putting on hands with javelins Mm -hmm. on them and they're a bit of a funny pose sometimes but you can use some of the bowmen to be you have to sort of carve off the, the bow case as well but you can use some of the bowmen as kind of weirdly dynamic javelinmen um, yep. As well, which is kind of they, they've got a bit of. Um, bit of as I say, it's them. like don't need to. I thought there were too many, but yeah, it's but like, there is enough anyway. Yeah, I will eat those sixteen um, in rear support. Oh, yeah. and here's one for Dave, by the way, because I've been looking it around. Because yeah. to do the um, patricians, I want it quite late patricians, so they're bow arm mm. calf, and I was going to use a bow arm calf for the quite late um, for the early Byzantines as well, and then I thought yeah. I might as well do the Byzantines. Then what models? Sorry. Same figure. No, well, what model? Yeah, same figure. So that that rolls over. But then it's what what models will I use for the Buccalarii or whatever, mm. however yeah. you pronounce it. And Dave, I've heard you go on about how you want to do this army, but there's never been figures that look right. No, so I've, been looking, uh, I've I've been looking around. Have a look at the Aventine twenty eight mil range. That's yeah, always yeah, the yeah, answer, yeah. isn't it? That's beautiful, always the answer. Yeah, beautiful um, early Byzantines, and it's like, yeah, them they work. So yeah, isn't, aren't there some new really fireforge? Good. Aren't there some new fireforge ones coming out, or are they a bit cartoony? I thought fireforge were doing sort of like later, sort of like maybe tenser. later. Okay, um, and right. they do look kind of different, really. Um, yeah, but I, I might, I might be wrong. But most of their yeah. range is sort of like that end. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, the Aventine, like, the Aventine um, Sassanids are really amazing. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, they're stellar. Because I've been looking at them, thinking because I do want to do a Sassanid army as well, because I want to give my Roman, Romans and Byzantines an opponent. And yeah. I've been looking at them, going, "Oh, they look nice." And then I've yeah. been looking at how much it would cost to do it. In yeah. whole army. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus! Ooh, now yeah. I'm saying that plastic's quite expensive, but yeah. Fuck. 
Yeah. But oh. Full Metal Aventine would be really quite something, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it would be, um, yeah, that would that would require going on the insurance, um, very much so. So, all right. Well, look, I think that's gone round. Um, has that gone round everybody um, who's shopping? I think it has. Yeah, we're not we're not missing anyone. So, um, I think on that note, we can um, probably move on and, and go round to all the places that we've gone round. This means war. So we've done painting, we've done shopping. Let's do actually rolling dice and playing stuff. So um, we've had a one day at the club. We just this minute had roll call. Um, and there's been a bit of a French expedition, which there's a whole separate podcast coming about, um, which is a little bit weird, um, which which we did trail earlier. But um, maybe start with Andy. You went to the one day and then you list checked for roll call. So you didn't play there. But how was your one day? Mixed, to win, a draw and a defeat. Um, OK, the game. Yeah, the game I lost was to Peter, but since he's the world champion, I, I, I'm not going to get too upset about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I was did you, using... What did you use? Um, good question. I'm trying to remember what was the theme. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was medieval, late medieval. Oh, metal, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, that's right. I used, I I used um, Milanese Condottieri. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd win in my first game. No, I drew my first game, won the second and lost the third. And uh, I think Peter... Peter either won it or, or came very close to the top. Okay. Can't remember. All right. Somebody did very well with it. All right. Okay. Anybody else yeah. go to it and remember? Dave, did you go? I went. I took the medieval Spanish. I enjoyed playing with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I did quite well, but I can't remember. The yeah, I think you were second or third or something. <laughs> I think I was, but yeah. I've done so many competitions and yeah. things yeah. recently. It's like blurring. Yeah. yeah. And the real surprise is that P- Richard Case came well down the order. Yeah, he was using yeah, the experimental he... army, wasn't he? Hussites, I yeah. think. He was using Hussites with a trebuchet. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was we, a novelty. We had fun. We figures. had fun. It was good. The, the, because it was a one day, we, everybody took weird and wonderful armies, except me when I took my classical one. Oh, okay. Jesse won it, didn't he? That's right. Jesse won it. Oh, yeah, thing. that was it. Jesse. Jesse yeah. All right. And then, Dave, so you that was your one day, and then um, you did roll call. Um, yeah. Just kind of soon as well. Um, so so that was um, that was good. Um, how did you, yeah, how roll did you call do that? Really, I really, really enjoyed Roll Call. I really enjoyed the theme. I thought the Roman, it was just great having, I mean, I'm, yes, there was a lot of Romans. There were a lot yeah. of Huns, a lot of Romans, a lot of the usual suspects. But it, I thought it was really good having all the legionaries on the table because it, it made a really pleasant difference from as a theme. I really enjoyed the theme. I really enjoyed the competition. Yeah, because it was, it was the Roman pond. It was armies in the era of the Romans who could have dipped their toes into the med was the gist of it so it sort of cut out the you know more horsey sassanity type stuff and and some of the other stuff that's a bit further east or a bit wild and woolly into africa or whatever but it just meant they were but you still got sort of the seleucids and the early romans and late romans and some of the huns but not the, the huns with elephants and, and and those weirdy things in so people seem to have some proper line up and fight armies and but it did end up with quite a lot of the cavalry hunnic armies doing well as well which was yeah, Which that was, was unusual. That was In, a real yeah. surprise, I thought, because I, yeah. I didn't expect, I really didn't expect those army. I mean, it's not the way I would have run it. And even if I had a Hun army, it's not the way I'd run a Hun, a, a Hun yeah. army either. Yeah. So were, they run as, uh, were they run as Hunnic or were they run as German? Uh, they were no, run Hunnic. As, Hunnic. Oh, well, basically, Hunnic. the armies that did well were sort of everybody on a horse with a bow. Yeah. Most of them okay. elite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really unusual. So, Which really put to, aid to my theory that cavalry bow have gone out of fashion in version yeah. four and don't really work. Yeah, and then they just ran away. In fact, Hubert got one hundred and fifty-six points. Yeah, Hubert Hube had won by by the end of round four. He didn't even need to play round five, but he did and won it anyway. But yeah. um, but he couldn't have been caught after round four. Um, which is, I suppose, if you've got an all cavalry army, that's that's textbook, isn't it? You just can't <laughs> be caught. That's the way it works. But. But I, I tried to see if the reduction in points for medium swordsman impetuous in version four had broken the rules by making them a super troop type. And I'm glad to report it hasn't at all. Um, <laughs> they, uh, it was a, it was an interesting experiment, which I may not repeat. Um, but, um, I did manage, but in the last game, I did manage to have 19 um, medium foot impetuous warband on table, um, which was kind of a good number and two heavy four band as well. Um, so I managed to dismount some cavalry, 
And I just sort of poured all these war bandit people. And um, if they had horses with pointy sticks, that didn't really work. And um, <laughs> and if they had other stuff, it occasionally worked. Um, but it was entertaining. Like it entertained I, think, I, I, I heard you threw an, you threw an included strategist, or he must have been attached to units. Yeah, no, no, uh, he was at, yeah, at yeah, Stephen's attached. army trying to break it. And uh... well, it, it was we we're in the very last game, and um, my army was going to go down and i needed one point to take stevens down yeah and um his thing to take my army down i think he had an elite cataphract with a general going into the flank of a disrupted medium foot swordsman mm. um and he needed to win that combat to win the game um <laughs> and it was chances are he would so i thought this is the time to put the strategist in and roll a six one and, and get a draw and scrape another round out of it and it didn't obviously work um because because i was dead it changed a minus five combat into a minus four one which um <laughs> you know he's not he's not massively weighting the odds in my favor for a win really um you know it went, went for a six well, I, mean, I, did, I didn't realize your, your i didn't realize your army was quite so close to defeat at the time but oh uh, no it was it was yeah. gone it was you know it was it was literally gone i needed well, to overturn a minus you... five difference well, so, pardon the pun, you don't want to die not knowing, do you? You know. No, exactly. He was never going to die not knowing. So that was fun. Uh, and I missed the one day as well. Um, so, Simon, you went to roll. Did you do the one day? Or did, um, I'm trying to if you did the one day or, um, or did no, you just do roll call? I couldn't do the one day because of, of work, because of work in the weekend. Uh, so I, I came along to roll call and um, held up the club motto by being yep. the most competent in the 25 mil. Good. Barely barely getting into triple digits on the fifth yeah. round um, and somehow managed to absolutely suck completely playing with the Vikings. So yeah. so the, the period we had was um, any army, 1066 AD. Yeah. So I was expecting a whole bunch of mad Byzantines and um, Normans and all that. And in the end, it was basically a um, two Vikings, a whole bunch of samurai, uh, four samurai, a Byzantine, Indians, um, a mad Chinese army, and a couple other ones. And it was just quite a quite an interesting period. So um, hmm. my Viking plans have gone back to the table and I'll uh, be rethinking them. Yeah, sometime. there's a different the way to decision. use Vikings. There's a different way to use Vikings, isn't it? Now we know sure. why the Vikings didn't colonise China, yeah. No, oh, exactly. Yeah. And in fact, going going back to it, um, so Dave, you, you had a Viking outing when we went to um, Normandy. Yeah, which I guess we Vikings better briefly did really cover. well. Yep. They, they did really, really well. I, I mean, got to the final game. If I'd won that final game, I think I would have come third, but I ended up coming ninth out of 30, which I thought was quite good in France. Mm. Yep. It's playing in a completely foreign language. They, there was even less English spoken than Spanish spoke English. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, it was fun. It was a yeah, terrific time. It was a oh. proper road trip and a real laugh. Yeah. Loved every minute of it. The Bayer Tapestry. Um, Absolutely stunning. Just, it's so weird to be sat in front of it when, you know, you see it so often, but then suddenly you kind of get halfway around and you go, no, but this is really it. This is, and it's like six inches away, okay, behind glass, but it's really that thing. And um, although the one thing I thought we, we did talk about, I mean, maybe we talk about it when we, we basically recorded a podcast, me, Dave and Mike Bennett, in a series of pubs and bars in between games and um walking around german coastal defenses and the bayer tapestry so it's somewhat incoherent and there's quite a lot of background noise um and it gets a little bit repetitive as well because we sort of forgot but um but it's there and that'll be out shortly after this one i think with all with all the battle reports but um but yeah bayer tapestry german coastal defenses ruan we managed to almost miss where um what's the name had been burnt at the stake joan of arc bridge Pegasus Bridge, which has been moved um, yes. just away. They've got another new version of Pegasus Bridge. I think the old one was MDF, possibly. It was starting to go yeah. soggy in the in the Normandy rain. Um and a horse glider. And um and some great um some great games in a Norman themed competition. Um so you took Vikings, I took actually Normans, William the Conqueror, and um um, Mr. Bennett took um, Sicilian Normans, I think it was, or yeah, Normans. yeah Sicilian's Normans, with, which was basically a better version of my army, which he proved in the, the very final game um, when and to end up uh, walking away with the trophy from it. Um, but but no, it was just a cracking cracking long weekend. Um, only kind of 
challenged by the fact that we nearly ended up get stuck in France because there was a French fisherman strike and they were blocking the they were blocking the port and and we kind of got to the ferry and the guy went oh there is a strike you may not uh you may have got today maybe maybe you will maybe not and we're like how do you know this they do this all the time maybe they stop maybe they know who knows <laughs> it was pretty chilled but but then they, um, a half-hearted strike. Did you also uh-huh. say, if you do that accent again, you are yeah. never leaving this country and you'll exactly. stay in prison forever? No, no, they, they all speak like that, mate. They all speak like that. It's exactly like that. We we use the accent in, in pubs and bars. They love it. They really love it. Um, so, no, it's fantastic. It was um, it was really, really good. And But the Northern French are just totally separate to, to everybody else in the ADLG world. They didn't know, you know, they were like, oh, who are these strange people coming over? Yeah. Um, one guy was like, I was taking photos, and one guy goes, "Oh, you have a, a, a blog?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, it's this one." Wrote it down. He goes, "Oh, that's interesting. I'll I'll have a look." And you know, I don't really want to go big on the "Do you know who I am?" thing, but <laughs> but, 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 but 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 now but, but kind of go. Oh, I've never heard of that. I've never <laughs> seen it. No one's ever mentioned it to me before. Ever. Nobody involved. going most. Mosh too is Mosh Dave too, from Mosh the sure. podcast. Yeah. yeah, Dave from Dave from the podcast. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll get that out fairly shortly after this one. I think as soon as I finish doing all the the write ups to tie it in, and um, and that was absolutely a hoot. And um, and other than that, um, I think it's been it's been an entertaining bit of gaming um, going on over over the last few weeks. Which now we've done the gaming and we've done the French bit. It must be time, Adam. I'm going to do it again for Z Music. <laughs> Monsieur Finkel um, in the Finkel kitchen, um, <laughs> whatever it is. So I, I've, as usual, this has like become sort of a two layer sort of meta quiz. And the first thing is, the first question is, can we remember what the last one was about? And I think, was it the last time we, we gave the answers to the wrong edition or something like that? It, it could well have been, yes. Yeah, it might have been, but we're not that This fast. is what happens we're when we don't do this for a while. But, no, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I only know because I've got it on my on my iPad here, and it was okay. Beware the Ides of March, because uh, we did it in yeah. March time. We did it in March, yeah, it's true. So uh, the, the three questions, the first one was, when Admiral Bing was shot by a firing squad on the 14th of March, the writer Voltaire commented that the English feel the need to shoot one of their admirals from time to time to encourage the others. And the question was, in what year was Admiral Bing shot? No idea. Not a clue. Not a scoop. Hamzin? 1740 something? 1757. It was during the uh, Seven Years' War. Close. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Right. On the 18th of March, 1915, how many Allied battleships were sunk in the attack on the Narrows near Dardanelles? Ten. None. Three. Three is quite a lot. Three. Yeah, it was three. Three. Okay. Three is quite a lot. Yeah, they all hit mines. Right. Yeah. And then at which battle on 15th of March, 1781, did the British Army win but suffered over 25% casualties? Guilford Courthouse. Yep. Well done. Oh, oh. Proper answer. Okay. Well, that um, that means (coughs) the the last week questions sont finis. And um, on with the music. Before we just go on, I would like to say, though, that I lived in Guildford for six months and I've seen the courthouse and they don't mention the battle at all. They just don't. Yeah, no, not a plaque, not a blue no, banner blue. or anything. Nothing. Okay. Well, that may have just stymied Andy's next question. Um, well, but, fortunately um, not. Now, no. battle, which battle sites don't have blue plaques? But no, Andy, hit us with this month's questions. Right. Well, well, the theme, well, given that um, Roll Call was all about the Roman pond, uh, this 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 uh, episode's theme is pond dwellers. And it's all to do with um, right. people who have some... Uh, Connection with the Mediterranean, waterfly larvae. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not military. I history. just remember they're sort of like the big bullies of ponds. So I, that's the only thing I remember from doing ponds at primary school when I was. I, I wish I'd known that before I put these set these questions. Do, do they right. eat tadpoles? No, no. Right. They eat everything. They just okay. eat everything. They're okay. just like the yeah. 
Okay. Oh, well, that wasn't one. Of, that wasn't one of the questions. But right. um, sorry. First question is: Which head of state in World War Two served as an officer in the Ottoman Navy in First World War? I think we've had this before, haven't we? I don't know. It's a mystery one. Right? Okay. All right. Intriguing. Yeah. All right. The second question is: The poem whose first line is "The boy stood on the burning deck" relates to a naval battle in the Mediterranean. We've had Who, this. Before. No, be, be, <laughs> get back in your no. box. <laughs> Who commanded the winners in that battle? Was it Octavian, Don Juan of Austria, or Admiral Nelson? That's a pretty mixed bunch, isn't it? Really, you don't. Uh, that's like that's like a joke. Don Juan, Octavia, and Admiral Nelson hopped into a bar or something like that. <laughs> um, right, next one. Um, right, and the third one is which first century emperor of Rome was executed after he was found hiding in a dog kennel? Was it Caligula, Vitellius, or Domitian? Okay. All right. Well, look, that's three good questions with possible Roman answers as well. So we're clawing back to the Ides of March. So um, we will. And I don't think there were the padder on Sir Francais. So we just have the music to bring us to the, the French quiz thing. French head of state who served in the Ottoman army in the First World War? I suppose it could. It could well be. Yeah. But maybe that's a clue. Um, maybe we should move the clues. Maybe, right. maybe, well, it's, just, maybe it's a red herring. Okay. Erring rouge, as they say. An erring rouge. The erring rouge. That's they don't you may, say. You may, just have named, you may just have named this podcast there, Andy. The episode <laughs> may be called Le Herring Rouge, I suspect. Uh, a bit like the old Phil Rouge that they used to have on it to knock out. Um, <laughs> Who was so, it up right. you played your joker? Played your joker, anywhere in. Um, when so you say on... Niho, Niho, Niho to French Niho, people, Niho, they Niho. look at you completely like you're mad and go, what the fuck are you on about, mate? <laughs> as long as you don't say, listen very carefully, I will say this only once. I'll say this only once. <laughs> yes, it's, not crossed the, it's not crossed La Manche, Niho, no. Niho, Niho. I think no, La Manche. Exactly. No, exactly. La Manche, La Manche. Uh, but Khan Castle is very impressive. Um, so if you're ever taking the ferry to Weestream, which I believe is how it's pronounced, not Weestram, um, you should um, you should stop and look at Khan Castle because that's very jolly. We were going to have a holiday North... there, but it got, it got kiboshed by COVID. But um, okay. uh, we're going to dust off the plans one day, maybe go back to Normandy. Yeah, definitely. If you're ever in Normandy, you've also got Festigrat land. Which is what one man? of the yeah. festival land, which is one of the worst, um, one of the worst uh, fun fair type amusement parks I've ever been to. It's all right actually, but it's it's not great. But yeah. if, if 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 you got an afternoon in the family, Festi Land would might be my tip. Well, we were we were about. Is it as shit as Dutch Wonderland in, um, in 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 Lancaster in Pennsylvania? That's true. That's pretty grim. But we were we were just too early for the Viking theme park to be open. It only opens at the beginning of April. Otherwise, no we could have gone around the Viking theme park. I don't think it's Viking rides. I think it's people just sort of dressed as Vikings and you walk around them and go, Ugh, and then they go, we are French. We don't know what you're talking about. Um, so, or something like that. <laughs> um, but no, it didn't. So have we got anything happening in the immediate future or have we just talked about Salute already? Are we kind of done and dusted on that? Is there any other things happening? The only campaign in May. Yeah, campaign. Campaign, yeah, that's true. But we might do another one. And the challenge. That. And the challenge that's, in June. That's yep, June. That's, true. That's, that's a long way away. So we're actually almost on a bit of a break from gaming at the moment with a bit of luck. And um, until, um, yeah, that's possibly it. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Happy days. We might get some painting done. There might be some things to do. So just one quick wrap up then running along the top. Mr. Saunders, have you got anything particularly exciting you're looking forward to in the next few weeks other than salute? Uh, Easter. But not Easter. working. That'll be good. Okay, good answer. Tamsin, what about you? Easter and salute. Yeah, Easter and salute. It's all it's all egg-based. Andy. Oh. Um Passover starting tomorrow. Passover, night. exactly. Oh. But I do get I do get to trot out my Escape from Egypt game with a chariot. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's always the highlight of the year. We'll we'll be coming live from the, the Finkel Arena to um <laughs> to watch that on a a podcast or something like that, video podcast. Mr. Warsdale, you're um you're now happy to be able to buy little bit of shield transfers in the right numbers. I'll be able to do that. But also um starting this American Civil War campaign soon. We had a uh, game of fire and fury recently, just to remind myself of the rules. And yeah. 
What is the one learning that you should never forget about Fire and Fury? And I forgot stand, it. Stand in a line and shoot. Don't oh, attack. Yeah. No, the one learning is it doesn't matter how good the attack you set up is. Yeah. You're going to throw it off. Just, yeah, they're, throw, yeah, yeah. they're fun, but frustrating set of rules. Yeah, so I'm they are. Them. Absolutely. That's good. Okay. Simon, what about you? It's a salute. Looking forward to painting some tr- and painting 25 mil um, Greeks. 25 mil Greeks, getting them all done. Good. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it's getting two or th- uh, two, possibly three battle reports out. I think I've got Beachhead video coming out tomorrow, which may be before this podcast comes out. I've got um, the road trip to Normandy is nearly done. And then I've got to kind of write up the car crash of um, of um, warfare and my um, oh. war bands. And then it's kind of a bit of a big old break for me until, until the next thing, which I'm not even sure is until June, perhaps for me um gaming wise so so i think on that note we've actually rattled through this pretty quickly and um that may allow me to bang this out pretty quickly as well so for everybody we will we'll be back with other podcasts between now and then which are different themes but but for this one goodbye goodbye bye 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 everyone on floor on floor It was good actually see Romans on the table. I think I managed to see um, one legionary all weekend um, who was in a Seleucid army. So <laughs> my uh, my theory of pouring warband onto legionaries didn't really work <laughs> at all. This means war. Nihon, Nihon, Nihon.